Hello, welcome to the Nimic Podcast. This is Richie, your usual host. And today we will be talking about a new feature that we recently added to the wallet. We added USDC support to the Nimic wallet. You can try it out in wallet.nimic.com. And to talk more about that, we have Marvin, blockchain engineer of the team, and Soren, who is taking care of the front end, all, all, the, all that magic that happens in an app, uh, everything you see there. So guys, how are you feeling today? I'm good. Yes. Are uh, you Marvin? All good? Yes, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks for joining us. Yet. Totally. So, um, to, so USDC, this is the topic today, right? Why is USDC a good choice? Uh, like there's other stable coins. So Marvin, why do you think like... Yeah, so we uh, so we chose USDC mostly because uh, the it was the best of the alternatives. So uh, the, the, the other large stable coins uh, typically have the issue that they are more centralized and less, uh, less, less, uh, let's say, controlled, which um, are, are well monitored, let's say, places like that. So there's no there's no uh, authority looking over it or or badly also uh, ba badly any authority. And at the same time, um, uh, that th things like the Binance USD or for example are like very much centralized on a single uh, single exchange or single entity that might easily get into uh, get users into trouble if they they turn off. And USDC is uh, is even though there's some 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 tight coupling to Coinbase, it's legally an independent entity. And also that uh, Circle, the company, is uh, very much uh, under oversight of the U.S. authorities. Um, and that's also much better than, for example, Tether, which is not really uh, providing any proof of reserves or uh, not any usable proof of reserves. I was going to say that Circle is good in the proof of reserves, so it's uh, yeah. So mo it's the most well-trusted stablecoin. Exactly, yeah. And then we have also seen some other, you know, algorithmic stablecoins that are not packed. Uh, and, and, and unstable. So. Uh, yes, and apparently very unstable and, and not actually giving that stable coin thing. And most of the the, the the or many of the of the algorithmic stable coins basically already are gone again. And we all know the story about uh, UST. So yeah, uh, USDC was the obvious choice for us. Yeah, what you're talking about the proof uh, that that Circle provides is uh, I noticed that recently when there was a lot of uh, I think the market was a little bit scared. They were calming the market down with their transparency in their website that basically proves how in real time how everything all their reserves work all their funds yes so i mean uh circle had some of the of the reserve funds of usdc stored at just uh, silicon valley bank so they were might have been affected but uh, uh they also made clear from the beginning that even if some of these funds will not be retrievable they will cover all the all the, all the costs and they will be able to with their partners and uh even even though the, the on, on the on the on the exchange the, the price crashed a little bit uh, uh circle was saying that at their uh at their official venue you can easily always swap to uh use the at the at the one to one rate that is supposed to be so they they never stopped that over the weekend they paused they, they paused the, okay. the withdrawals because uh well it's a bank thing but it, it doesn't work on weekends but they still clear, made clear that it will always be possible and continue to do that they were very transparent from the beginning i think they even shared like exactly how much dollars they were in that at that bank and yes so forth yeah and also they keep um, like i think their funds in uh, diversified in not very risky assets like for example in, in treasury bonds and, and things like that for me it was interesting because i thinking about one of the less risky ways of like conserving or storing your value is also from a, a, at that point uh, at that level i think they're they're making a good choice there it's kind of interesting um so now moving on from circle and usdc being a, an, a good choice uh, from the trusted part because this is usdc for circle right it's interesting but we use usdc on polygon specifically and usdc work in different blockchains as well why did we go for this one so the uh primary choice is obviously it would be would have been on ethereum but ethereum nowadays is very crowded and ex uh, transactions are very expensive and it's also a slower block time than polygon has so transactions take longer sometimes even don't get into the next block right so you need to wait a few blocks so the user experience is much better on polygon where the transactions are usually confirmed within a second and the fees are much lower as well so for nimic that prides itself on its user friendliness and beginner friendliness 
UCC on Polygon was the obvious the obvious choice. I think it's also relevant that uh, we do not try to use USDC for the payment use case primarily. So uh, while USDC on Ethereum is uh, supported in, in more point of sale systems or in, or in more generally on more systems, uh, uh, if we don't need that, um, they, they, this, this does not give us any advantage. So if we had desired to to make the USDC feature easily also for a lot of payment uh, options here so that you can pay in, in, in all the places where USDC is supported, then Ethereum would have been the better choice. But that's not the prime prime goal of having USDC in our wallet, uh, and that's why it's not that important for us. The prime goal is? Well, the prime goal is that you have a stable coin that uh, can be used to store, fund, into. swap into and swap out. Exactly. So it gives you give your crypto value in USDC if you need to. Yes. So like if there's a, the, the market turns volatile, you can always just go into the stable coin easily by swapping over, and then you have it. You can be sure that it is stable, uh, and don't don't have to have any issues with volatility. Which is probably especially useful for business businesses that need to keep some actual stable USDC on hand because they also need to pay their people in USDC, exactly. USD or USD or other yes. stable currency. Okay, and, and as with many things, devil is in the details. Uh, I understand that our implementation, our specific implementation of USDC has something special about it. It's not like, you know, just adding a coin in a multi-currency wallet. What's so special about this implementation? So I think that goes back to Marvin's genius here, who uh, uh, proposed and then also built the gas abstraction, gas abstraction for our UCC implementation so that people, our users don't actually need to use Matic, the native Polygon token to for gas costs to send UCC, but you can actually just send UCC and we take the fee from your for UCC and convert it into gas on the fly with Marvin's cool contracts. Yeah. Open GSN. Exactly. Built open Gas Station Network. All right. So there's the Open Gas Station Network, which is originally built for Ethereum, but also exists on, on other chains like Polygon. And uh, uh, normally it's used for basically having a, an, another party pay your transaction fees. Um, but in our case, uh, we are not taking th that on us, right? We are not paying the user's transaction fees, um, but we are making uh, clever use of, of, of Uniswap to uh, swap a part of your USDC amount over to uh, to Matic, so it's so that you can directly pay with your own USDC the transaction fees. Exactly, we're bringing together various parts of the smart contract ecosystem, a Web3 ecosystem, basically, yep. to enable this. Exactly. For you. And very interesting, that's very interesting. And that works with uh, sending transactions, but also with swaps, right? With our super simple swap. Exactly, you can, that's another feature that we have in our wallet, obviously, where you can swap your USDC to and from Nimic and Bitcoin non-custodially with atomic swaps with super simple swap the service provider and that also works the same way you pay this the swap fees in USDC directly automatically because from the swap perspective it's it's of course like sending a transaction but does it need to utilize GSN or all this uh, gas abstraction magic when locking USDC for a for an atomic swap as well? And it works basically the same. So you still have a transaction that is uh, using the uh, OpenGSN. It just, instead of just transferring the USDC from A to B, it will lock the USDC into a smart contract. Uh, and in case where, you, uh, where you're where you basically redeeming from a smart contract when you're getting the funds, uh, get, when you're buying USDC basically, then uh, uh, the, the USDC that you're getting will just deduct a small part of what you're getting. So basically, uh, uh, even if you don't have any USDC or Matic at all in your account, you can still already use that system to receive USDC f with a with a swap. Exactly. You don't need any any other gas paying token. You can use USDC without anything else on your account. Yeah, exactly. On your Polygon. Okay. When we were planning the, the announcement, we were discussing different wordings and we talked about gasless. That is a word going around a bit now in the space and also how the more correct term would be gas abstraction. Can you like explain? For our use case. For our use case. Right, because uh, mm -hmm. other projects sometimes, or other, some wallets that use the term gasless actually pay the fee for their users. So they actually, in, in that case, for the users it's gasless. But in our case, we're converting some of your part, some of your UCC into the on-chain token fee. And thus it's gas abstracted. We're abstracting it away. So you only need to, you don't need to care about any of that. Okay, and it's, it sounds like, like you said, right, 
getting a lot of different uh, projects and functionalities into one single thing that works very easy for the user. Um, what was the biggest challenge from your side, uh, Sodden, while integrating this new feature? So for me, it was the first time programming or working with Web3, which is the umbrella term for all these uh, smart contract interaction methods, right? From And Web3 basically from, from the web browser, right? From JavaScript. So I had to learn the different libraries that I used for that, that are provided by the different uh, projects. Um, we had to make a, de a decision between Web3 JS versus Ethers JS, for example, which we went with Ethers JS. It's uh, more modern and uh, also good, main well maintained library. I had to learn how to use the OpenGSN. Well, toolkit basically, and read through the OpenGSN documentation, read about paymasters and forwarders and relays and the relay hub and where the where the uh, where the deposits are, are stored and so forth. I had to learn about well, not not just me. I have to say, sorry, I'm using the word I had to learn, but my team and also uh, yeah, basically my team and the other people <laughs> my team had to learn um, how Uniswap works how the how the the exchange the spot price for the for the exchange is calculated from the liquidity on both in in the pool and that was some crazy learning curve but also a great journey and it, i it, i have a newfound appreciation for all these for what the evm the theory virtual machine and smart contracts can actually do and how they can can be combined like puzzle pieces to work together and work with each other and it's it's crazy in a good way. Cool. And, and what do you think for from your side, Marvin? What was your biggest challenge or what what did you enjoy the most? Well, uh, it's, a, it's not the first time for me to use GSN, so uh, I had some experience there, but uh, it's the first time doing it exactly that way as we did with the integra direct integration of Uniswap, which was kind of a new thing. Uh, but also, it's, uh, the way we did it is not very typical for GSN uh, at all. So uh, we actually had to uh, struggle with a little bit with the uh, with the gas use of of, uh, of Uniswap actually because uh, uh, kind of like GSN requires you to, to not use too much gas for determining of the transaction being allowed or not and uh, to figure out if the transaction is possible we first had to figure out if there is enough USDC uh, on the user's balance so that he can pay the fee for the transaction so we had to actually figure out the price using Uniswap doing basically a conversion already in very early stage of the transaction and uh, that is not how GSN was in the pre-check phase in yes in the early checking of a transaction so that's not how GSN is typically being used so it wasn't like straightforward but uh, we, we managed to, to bring our gas use down to what is possible in this early stage uh, transaction checking so that in the end worked out good yeah, you you are the wizard that brought all these uh, smart contracts yes I, I only we only wrote the the javascript typescript in the browser to interact with them or via via the the web3 provider but you are the, you are the actual so um what's the what's the language called solidity solidity yes even if exactly yeah so uh I mean, it wasn't the first smart contract for us to write. I mean, we, I had some, some first experience with GSN and also we had a token sale contract back then in the days, right? So we have some, some experience with, uh, with the Serum things, or uh, EVMs, smart contracts. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, was a little bit different, much more, uh, focusing on, on improving, uh, gas use and performance. So, uh, interesting thing as well. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. And Last question, is there something left uh, on the, maybe the nice to have, uh, some optimization, some improvements, uh, something that you would say, yeah, maybe later we can work on this uh, related to this feature. So there's two things, one that we're already planning and one that is just an idea for the moment, but one that we're already planning is, um, there's a way to reduce the gas use of transactions for our users further by pr using pre-approval from the USDC contract to your to the transfer contracts, and we will do a small audit, or like we will, we, we don't know. We will need to review the code a bit more, and maybe even have an audit of some kind um, that we can then enable this feature for users, so that transactions after the first one will be cheaper because the there's less gas being used in the transaction itself. And the second thing that we might now look into it is the being a, like integrating some kind of bridge or bridge provider 
so that people can actually get in and out of also Ethereum USDC or like send it like convert their UCC on Polygon that they have in our wallet to Ethereum in another in another wallet, another address. Ethereum USDC. Which will maybe improve our ex improve the experience in our wallet even further. Anything to add, Marvin? To that? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> not at this time. And not at this time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks a lot then for joining me. It's uh, really interesting and uh, and it works amazingly. Uh, I mean, using USDC without having to worry about Matic is, is really yeah. Without actually pretty interesting. Um, we launched recently, right? And two days before the really like as it usually is, right? Two days before the actual testing in the mainnet started with our, our community also with some close testing and. As usual, they found a few more edge cases and bugs. So it was, I'm not saying it was a race against time, but it was it was tight in the end to actually get all the fixes in. And uh, now it's surprisingly, <laughs> for me as the one, as part of the team who built it, it's surprising how stable it is now. But it works well. It's good. Mm -hmm. It does work amazingly. So thanks to everybody in the community that helped testing. And if you want to also join in testing, we are continuously testing. We have new things coming out. So remember to join us. Subscribe to this video if you liked it. And add any questions in the comments to Marvin and Sodden. Thank you for joining me today. See you in the next one. Thank you, Richie. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>